It's a true honor to be receiving an award that bears the name of Justice Stevens and to be recognized by my fellow colleagues in the legal profession truly is one of the most amazing accomplishments of my career. Justice Stevens served as an inspiration and a mentor to so many of us in the legal profession. And he served this country and the whole legal profession with such honor and distinction for many, many years. It really is amazing to receive this award and to be in the company of the, my fellow recipients. I want to take this time to congratulate them. And a special thanks to the Chicago Bar Association and all of its members. And let's hope that all of us in the legal profession can live up to the same high values that Justice Stevens has showed us through many years of service. Thank you again. My name is Jeff Coleman, and I deeply appreciate being a recipient of this award today, together with your other extremely worthy recipients. I was asked to say a few words about why receiving the John Paul Stevens Award is meaningful to me. That is easy. Justice Stevens has been and always will be a personal hero for me. He embodies all of the finest qualities of extraordinary lawyers and judges. Particularly in these highly divisive and partisan times, when I think about Justice Stevens, I do not think about Democrat or Republican, liberal or conservative, strict constructionist or some other highly rigid way of judging. Instead, I think about commitment to equality and fairness and other principles enshrined in our Constitution. I think about intellectual honesty, integrity, public service, civility, and professionalism. So to have my name associated in any way with Justice Stevens is a singular honor. I owe a personal debt to Justice Stevens. He authored some of the habeas corpus opinions in the Guantanamo cases. Because of his leadership in that critically important area, I was given the ability to embark upon one of the most challenging, most frustrating, most depressing, and most satisfying legal journeys a lawyer could ever have. So thank you, Justice Stevens, for making that possible, but much more so, thank you for your leadership in communicating to our profession, the public, and the world that even in the most challenging times, our nation adheres to and values the rule of law. This award is important to me also because it affords me an opportunity to thank some very important organizations and people. First, any recognition by the CBA and the Chicago Bar Foundation is extremely important to me because both organizations do so much to promote important principles in our profession. Second, there is nothing I have ever worked on by myself. I have worked with amazing mentors, Tom Sullivan, Burt Jenner, Jerry Solovey. I've worked with wonderful colleagues and great friends like Bill Von Haney, David Bradford, Joan Gottschall, and Bob Graham. And I've worked with brilliant younger lawyers too many to name, filled with enthusiasm, idealism, passion, and determination. Third, Jenner and Block has had a decades-long commitment to pro bono work, and I am but one of many beneficiaries of that commitment. Fourth, I have some wonderful clients, both in pro bono matters and in paying matters, and I am deeply indebted to them for bestowing upon me their trust and confidence. Last, most important, I have an amazing family. I have the most extraordinary and loving wife, Nancy, son, Matt, and daughter-in-law, Vanessa. My father was an inspiring role model, and my mother remains one. The love and support of my family sustains me in everything that I do. So for my clients, Jenner and Block, my friends and colleagues and my family, thank you so much for this recognition 
and Justice Stevens, we all deeply appreciate what you do and have done to advance the interests of justice in our nation and in our world. Hi, I'm Joan Gottschall. Receiving this award has been an amazing experience for me, and I am so, so grateful. I want to start by thanking my fabulous staff, for without them, I would have been able to accomplish very little and nothing very good. I also want to thank my wonderful friends and colleagues who have made and supported this nomination. Receiving this award has caused me to think a lot about all that others have done to help me achieve whatever it is I have been able to achieve. And while I have insufficient time to acknowledge personally the many lawyers and colleagues and teachers who have helped and supported me, I want to convey two critical things they have taught me. First, that what we do as lawyers matters. And for that reason, we are obligated to do it as well as we can. And second, that each of them who has put effort and energy into guiding me to do the best I can expects that I will pay the gift forward. I have tried to do that, and I will continue trying. In the brief time that I have, I want to say something about what receiving an award in honor of Justice Stevens means to me as a district judge. In an essay about Justice Stevens, Susan Estrich writes that Justice Stevens told his law clerks that if you look hard enough and think hard enough, you will find a right answer. The youthful Estrich found this comment risible. Based on her Harvard education, she believed that anything could be argued and decisions were based on values or even worse, politics. But ultimately, she concluded that Justice Stevens was right. There are better answers, ones that make more sense of a constitutional or statutory text, serve its goals better, and are more responsive to the actual facts of the case. Estridge says that clerking for Justice Stevens was hard, quote, precisely because he didn't decide who should win before he had read the cases. And in Justice Stevens' own words, quote, predictions about how a judge or justice is likely to vote are far less significant than the knowledge that he or she will analyze the cases with an open mind and with respect for the law as it exists at the time of the decision. Trying to understand the purpose of legislation is unfashionable these days, and we are urged to read statutory language literally, letting the results fall where they may. Sensitivity to the specific facts of a case at hand has also taken a beating, often referred to disparagingly as sympathy or empathy. But looking at Justice Stevens' judicial work exposes the poverty of these points of view and reminds us that we can and we must do better. What I see in Justice Stevens' opinions is the absence of prejudgment, a careful and open-minded reading of the applicable law, analytical brilliance and clarity of thought and expression informed by the practical wisdom that comes of openness to experience, both of one's own and of the facts of record. This is my ideal of justice, and for me, the very special meaning of this award. My name is Thomas Z. Hayward, Jr. I am honored this afternoon to be recognized by the Chicago Bar Association and the Chicago Bar Foundation with a 2012 Justice John Paul Stevens Award. I have had the privilege of being president of both the Chicago Bar Association and the Chicago Bar Foundation. Before that, David Hilliard and I began to work with Justice Stevens when he was second vice president of the Chicago Bar Association, and the two of us had the idea of forming the Chicago Bar Association Young Lawyers Section, which today has now grown into over 9,000 members. I also had the privilege of giving Justice Stevens the Alumni Medal from Northwestern University several years ago. And during my two years as chair of the American Bar Association Standing Committee on the Federal Judiciary, I was in contact with Justice Stevens regarding nominees to the federal bench on several occasions. For all of the foregoing reasons, 
the receipt of this award and his presence is something very meaningful and special to me and my family. Thank you. Justice John Paul Stevens throughout his career has been a guiding light of integrity, professionalism, and public service for the nation, and has provided a special pride for us here in Chicago. Early in my legal career, when I appeared somewhat frequently before the Seventh Circuit, when Justice Stevens served there some 40 years ago, I would prepare my briefs and arguments applying what I called the WWJSS rule. What would Judge Stevens say? It is a standard I have continued to carry with me, and Justice Stevens, I thank you because it brought me here today. Joining the ranks of the excellent lawyers and judges who have received this coveted award over the years is thrilling and humbling. I am especially honored to be a part of this year's class. Anita, Joan, Jeff, Tom, and Willie are most deserving. I congratulate each of them. I thank Bob Clifford who submitted my nomination and all the people who supported it. I thank CBA President Aurora Ostriaco and all the members of the selection committee she chaired. I also thank my colleagues and the people of the district court, especially my outstanding chamber staff for their diligence every day in furthering the delivery of justice. Lastly, I thank my wife, Paula Hudson Holderman, a leader in her own right. Without her love and support, I would not be here to receive this. Thank you all for coming. Hello, I'm Willie Miller. I am greatly honored to be a recipient of the Justice John Paul Stevens Award. I am really excited to be recognized with the other honorees, and I want to thank the Chicago Bar Association and the Chicago Bar Foundation for this great honor. I also want to thank my family, friends, co-workers, and the many others for their support over the years. It is that support which inspired me to be a career and de development coach to attorneys and other young professionals. It inspired me to be a proud 30-year member of FAM, the Fellowship of African American Men Youth Basketball Organization, whose mission is to serve underserved and marginalized youths. It inspired me to serve on the Evanston Township High School Board of Education for 12 years. And it inspired me to champion diversity and inclusion as a co-founder of IILP, the Institute for Inclusion in the Legal Profession. That support is what led me to a tenant I love and want to leave you with. You may even recognize it. I expect to pass through this world but once. Any good thing, therefore, that I can do or any kindness that I can show to any fellow creature, let me do it now. Let me not defer or neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. Thank you again for this great, great honor.